Hello, everybody. My name is Bernie Stopak. I want to give you a little introduction about myself prior to proceeding with recordings and a program of my new album called Operation Love. I am a retired board certified professor of neurosurgery from Washington, D.C. I did my formal neurosurgery residency training for general surgery and neurosurgery at the George Washington University Medical Center under the guidance of the iconic Hugo Grizzly, who was a wonderful um, neurosurgeon who had trained with Walter Dandy from Johns Hopkins, who in his turn had trained with Harvey Cushing, who was the father of American neurosurgery up in Boston. Uh, anyway, when I started my practice, uh, I certainly was not known and uh, I had to make a way for myself and I did that by getting privileges at virtually all the hospitals in the Washington metropolitan area. As a matter of fact, I went to so many hospitals, uh, I was affectionately called Beltway Bernie. And yeah, I was a journeyman neurosurgeon, but I really handled all kinds of neurosurgical problems involving the brain, spine, peripheral nerves, pediatric neurosurgery, uh, malformations, congenital malformations of the brain and spine, etc. Everyone knew that in the middle of the night, 24-7, I was the guy that would respond. And th this exposure did serve me very well in establishing a long-term healthy neurosurgical practice. Uh, I've always had a music interest and about two or three years ago I was sitting at the piano at home in Potomac, Maryland and realized that I had written about 40 or 50 songs. I started ju juggling these songs and deleting some, keeping others, and came down to 22. I felt that this was sort of an interesting love story and some personal experiences for myself that may resonate with other people. I got it down to 22 songs. The first three songs have to do with when you're looking to fall in love. The next seven turn out to be when everything's just fine. Then there's a transition tune. After that, a series of what I call saloon songs when things aren't so great but nonetheless, you decided to stay together as witnessed by the last three songs. Furthermore, I narrate the whole sequence from beginning to end. I did this because I feel that love is a universal topic and certainly more than 50% of marriages end of divorce and the other 50%, probably half of those aren't so happy. I feel <clears throat> that Love is a universal theme, and it, attach, it, it does attach everybody. I've given a number of concerts, and prior to the beginning of the concert, I always ask the question for a show of hands of how many people have been in love. Naturally, I seem to get a 100% response of hands going up. I follow up that with another question saying, and how many of you have had some difficulty with that love? And again, once again, the response is 100%. Anyway, at this time, I've decided to go on the internet uh, with my program called Bernie Stopak Operation Love, and my intent is this. Each week, I will sing one song from the album, followed up, followed up by one human interest neurosurgery story, which I think is uh, quite, quite remarkable. Uh, these are all personal experiences. They're all from live. Uh, patients uh, or stories that I have for people that uh, just say th these are all from live these are all from actual stories I of course will refrain from naming uh, any particular patient because of the patient privacy uh, concerns I hope you'll enjoy this particular type of uh, format and will be curious enough to follow up on a weekly basis for the entire 22 week length of the stories. So without any further discussion at this point, let's start the program. Hello everybody, my name is Bernie Stopak. I want to tell you my story of love, which takes place over a number of years 
Reliving one man's journey through love's tricky, bumpy road through two marriages. Hopefully, this original song collection will resonate with other lovers traveling similar pathways. At first, you're just dreaming of love, love, love. Dreaming of love, love, love Looking for love, love, love Waiting for love, love, love Knowing it's there Dreaming you walked right by Turning my head around Following your every step Lost in a cloud I held my breath And asked your name I was surprised When you turned And asked the same Dreaming of love Love, love Walking with you Arm in arm for a lifetime or more Dreaming of love 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 I hope you enjoyed my first offering of a song Dreaming of love, love, love. And now I want to tell you a story that uh, I was involved in in the southern part of France called the Provence. I went to medical school at the Faculty of Medicine in Montpellier, France, which is about 10 kilometers from the Mediterranean. And it's a very famous um, school in a lot of different areas, being the second oldest functioning medical school in the world next to Bologna. I had a professor there named Claude Gros, who was a very prominent neurosurgeon from the Mediterranean Basin. And it was a six-year school, and at, in my last year and a half, I was chosen by Professor Gros to be his first assistant. I was uh, lucky and honored to have this position, and actually spent 15 months with Professor Gros, uh, assisting him in over 700 neurosurgical operations. A number of these stories that I want to talk about really have come from my experience in that part of the world. The, <clears throat> the first story I want to tell about is about a 15-year-old young country girl who came into the emergency room very sick with headaches, nausea and vomiting, lethargy, uh, double vision, etc. Uh, in those days, we didn't have an MRI or CAT scan neurodiagnostic studies and I used to do all the diagnostic studies by performing what's called a cerebral angiogram, where we inject a, <clears throat> a water-soluble product into the arm or leg, and this uh, distributes into the vasculature of the brain. And normally we know what the blood vessels in the brain look like, and when they're distorted from anything that's wrong, you can usually figure out where it is. Anyway, her study showed a large uh, area that looked like a cyst because you only saw the outside wall of the cyst and you didn't see any blood vessels penetrating. So we felt that this was a dangerous enlarging cyst uh, causing a lot of pressure up in her brain and she certainly needed emergency surgery. I went out to speak with the family in the waiting room. It was a very large country family and particularly there was a craggy older uh, grizzly uh, grandfather and when I told him we felt it was a kiss assist right away he shouted back in French kiss hydatic in other words hydatic cyst I answered well that's very rare usually they're in the liver or some other place but rarely in the brain so anyway we took her to surgery uh, right away and turned the scalp flap and then the bone window uh, and came upon the the brain itself we saw that the brain was stretched out and it was very thinned out from the underlying cyst. We used something called a perforator or ventricular needle that had a stylet on it, and with placing it into the uh, uh, 
uh, puncturing it into the cyst itself and, and pulling out the stylet, we were greeted with the emergence of clear water-like fluid under a lot of pressure. When this happened, my patron, Professor Gro, shouted, Med, just hydatic. Oh, heck, it's a, it's a, it's a hydatid cyst. And why this is bad is that with the hydatid cyst, they fill with fluid, but at the most dependent part of the uh, cyst, there's something they eat called sable, which means sand, which are the scolices, in other words, the heads of the, uh, uh, of the, of, of the tapeworm. So we then carefully separated the wall, which is a little bit thicker, sort of cellophane-like. We separated the, the wall of the cyst from the rest of the brain and lifted it up and lifted the whole contents out without spilling it into the brain. Because if that happened, you then would infect the entire brain and that would be a hopeless situation, or very difficult anyway. So uh, we finished the operation successfully, closed her up, and then I went to speak to the family. And right away I said to the uh, the grandfather, I said, Monsieur, vous avez raison. C'était une kiss I said, Sir, you are right. This was a uh, that assist. And so he was very fear. Uh, he was very proud. The word in French is fear. He had his chest out that he had outsmarted the doctors and made the right my the, the right diagnosis. Anyway, she went on to a full recovery. And the reason that she got this cyst in her brain was that simply since they lived on a farm, she actually slept with a number of the animals and particularly a dog. These dogs can become infested with the, uh, uh, with the lesion and that's how she contracted the tapeworm, which eventually wound up in her brain. A, another uh, story involved after I'd established my practice in Washington, D.C., I was called to the emergency room at Holy Cross Hospital in Silver Spring, Maryland to evaluate a 31-year-old female who had just gotten married the day before. Well, on this next day, she suffered a severe headache and with signs of what we call a subarachnoid hemorrhage from rupture of a brain aneurysm, which is a very dangerous, precarious situation. I discussed the situation with her husband and her mother and decided to take her to surgery. Um, she was in dire straits and some people felt that maybe it wasn't uh, correct to proceed with the surgery. However, there is something called the art of medicine and you have to make your decisions not only on the facts that you have but on sometimes on your instincts as well. I did take her to surgery and I did clip her aneurysm of what we call the posterior communicating artery up in her brain. Uh, she survived the operation but stayed in a coma for about six weeks and every day the family was certainly concerned and I would say I'm not ready to give up on her yet, just uh, rub her and tell her that you love her. Well, sure enough after about six weeks she doesn't just wake up, she wakes up abruptly with everything intact. So this turned out to be a very nice ending for the story. And then on a subsequent visit to my office, her mother came and there was a framed portrait of myself, which I certainly never, uh, I never expected and didn't ask her to do. But her mother was an artist and she gave me this portrait. And on the portrait, the inscription was something to the effect, thank you, Dr. Stopak. Uh, for all your efforts and time and skill and particularly for giving us back Jan take this portrait in appreciation of the of the family so that certainly was a nice nice ending to this story